Hi, this is Vivian Vandeveld. I know that these are kind of crazy and confusing times with you not being able to go to school and having to do your learning at home. So I thought that I would come to your house through the internet um, and talk to you a little bit about where ideas come from. Because I think, where do you get your ideas is probably one of the questions that authors get asked the most. Actually, because of the kind of stories that I write, what I get asked is, where do you get those strange ideas? What a lot of people find odd is that many of my stories are based on fact, at least the beginning part, or at least one small aspect of it. Um, for example, this is a picture of me and my brother and our dog. You can tell this picture was taken a very long time ago. This dog was very, very smart. Our parents spoke not only English, but also French and they taught the dog to respond to commands in French. My brother and I did not speak French. We only spoke English, and therefore we had to teach the dog to respond to commands in English. This made the dog bilingual, which means that she understood two languages, and I thought that was very smart of her. I was convinced that not only did she understand the commands like sit and stay, but that she understood pretty much everything that I would say to her. So a lot of times if I had troubles, I would sit down with the dog and tell her all the things that I figured were going wrong in my life. And she would look up at me with her big, beautiful, dark eyes. And I was convinced that she understood everything that I was saying and that if she could only speak, she would sympathize with me and she would have great advice for me. And so that was an idea that hung around in my head for a very long time. What if a dog was so smart that a dog could speak? Eventually, I ended up writing a book called Smart Dog uh, about a dog that was the product of experimentation and genetic modification so that the dog could speak. This is the way Smart Dog appeared when it came out in hardcover. Even though the hardcover of Smart Dog was published by Harcourt Publishers, the paperback, the original paperback, was published by a totally different company, Random House. And the editors and art directors at Random House had a totally different idea of what the book should look like, what the girl in the story should look like, and especially what the dog should look like. The original hardcover and the first paperback came out in 1998. Um, at the turn of the century, when it was time to reprint the book because all of the paperbacks had been sold, Harcourt decided that they wanted to put out the new paperback, not to have it put out by Random House, and they also decided that it was time for a different look. At one point, Smart Dog became a Scholastic Book Fair book, and the editors at Scholastic had their own ideas about what the cover should look like. And I told you that when I was young, I did not speak French. I still do not speak French, but someone who was fluent in both 
French and English, translated the book so the book became available in France, and this is what it looked like there. So all of these books came about because I had the idea, what if there was a girl who had a dog who was so smart that he could talk? Which brings us to a writing prompt. Because each one of us is different, the stories that we write are all different from one another's. My experiences are different from my brother's. Even though we're only one year apart and we were raised in the same house, he and I have totally different ways of looking at things. Part of that is because he is one year older than I am. Part of it is because he is a boy and I'm a girl. And part of it is because of the fact that I was very nearsighted and I had to wear glasses. I was not wearing glasses in that picture I showed you before because I always hated wearing glasses. And the older we got and we started having different friends and having different experiences and this made us end up being totally different people. So you are different from any brothers and sisters that you might have and the stories that you would write would be different from the stories they would write. So I am going to ask all of you to write a story starting from the same idea that I had. What if there was someone who had a pet who was so smart that pet could talk? This is obviously a very smart dog. You might decide to write about a smart dog of your own, and that story would be different from the story that I wrote. Or you might decide that you want to write about a smart cat. Here's a pet rat who is smart enough to be able to decorate Easter eggs. What if he could talk? Or someone who has a guinea pig as a pet might try to figure out what goes on in my pet's head. What kind of things would he or she have to say to me? And actually, if we're talking about smart animals, we don't need to limit ourselves to pets. Uh, those of you who have read some of my books about Twitch the Schoolyard Squirrel know that I have a special fondness for squirrels because they seem to be very smart. What if they could talk? Do any of you have a horse? Horses are very intelligent. What do you think they would have to say to us? Here's a hamster who's smart enough to be getting a Christmas gift. I wonder if he liked what was in the gift. What would he have to say about that? And because a story prompt is just meant to get you thinking, you can move farther afield from just writing about a pet. What about some animals that you might see in your backyard, like maybe a deer? Or here's a baby bird. It looks as though he has a lot to say. This is a picture of me holding a chinchilla. I don't know if the chinchilla liked being passed around and held. It would be interesting to hear what the chinchilla had to say. How about telling a story from the point of view of a butterfly? Or a pelican? Or a manatee? Here's a penguin 
He's traveled a very long way to get here. What do you think he has to say? How about this fish? Here's an iguana. What would a smart iguana want to tell you? Do you think this lion has a story to tell? Here's a giant anteater. If you haven't seen a giant anteater before, or if you don't know much about them, you might have to do a little bit of research to see what kind of things they might have to talk about. And that goes for this agouti also. Here's a giraffe, but hmm. He is licking his own nose. I am not sure that smart is the word that I would use to describe him, but you might still say he's going to be smart enough to tell his own story, and you'll decide what that story should be. And you know what? You don't even have to write about a real animal. If you want to write about something like a dragon, feel free to go ahead and do that. This exercise is meant to strengthen your imagination and to get you thinking. I hope you have a good time writing a story based on an animal smart enough to talk.